right. So let me look here, this first one. Um, a lot on like amazing brand, design and agriculture, art and creators, and you kind of talked about that in the, uh, in the end. Um, but how can art and creators work with you? It sounds like you're still thinking about it, but. Yeah, I, 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 again, it's early, so we haven't figured it out. This is our first introduction to this community. But I think one opportunity may be to figure out some space, literally, could be a wall in the facility, that you know we rotate exhibits from the community. So that's one place. Uh, the other place, you know, at the end of the day, the content is a canvas, so storytelling. So I've described one opportunity, which is physical space. So imagine a wall in a greenhouse, and we make it available to this community. And once a quarter, perhaps, we rotate the physical art that's on the wall, and it's sourced from the community. But another one, uh, we have a guy, Dean, who's known to several of you. He's our top creative. And uh, I, I think, Jamie, following up with Dean and figuring out how to give you creative challenges, video challenges. So talk about mm. some of the kids. Oh, my right? gosh. Right? And, and we know interviewing and mini docs and 30-second spots, all of that. But I think the kids are a canvas. So talk about the kids we've got. They definitely are. And, and shout out to Dean and Armando and our design team. They are truly special. Um, our students, oh my gosh. So I mentioned their dedication a little bit earlier. Arriving early at school when they have full plates, you know, they're on band, they're athletes, they're doing all of this. Um, I, they were just very inspiring for me. Um, we have a few of our students who went through our Ag Tech program that are now going to Sullivan college here in Lexington, the yep. culinary school. Yep. Um, they were inspired and they want to go and often live in Italy and become chefs. Um, so, I mean, we talk about the work that we do, but it's these students that have been motivating us and, and being such a driving force that's been motivating. So, um, truly special. Shout out to Shelby Valley High School. And I'm not sure if I can mention the other high schools yet, but <laughs> Um, shout out to the other high schools that we have our Ag Tech programs at. You all are doing inspiring work and you're changing the world, so I'll see you soon. So Jamie, what that might look like is video storytelling mm -hmm. capacity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We have dozens of stories and a lot of them are anchored in the kids and how you take a kid from the region that never contemplated a career in Ag, didn't really know options to grow Ag, and all of a sudden they catch the bug. How do we capture those stories? Awesome. Well, we look forward to just starting the conversation and continuing to work with uh, the Lexington creative community. So several questions. This is from Lauren Gothrop. Um, do you guys have any efforts to collaborate with local farmers, people already doing other farming work in the area? Do you want to talk about that? Yes. Um, so yes, we plan on collaborating with local farmers in many different ways. Um, one that's really cool is so every um, every pay period, mm. we're going to round up value-added products, mm. um, produce from local farmers, and we're going to package it and put it all together for a basket for all of our employees so they know the names of the local farmers, and we can begin to collaborate and do things like that. Also, um, we've been having many conversations and many roundtable discussions about how we could also inspire other farmers and get them on our site. Mm -hmm. um, so many different things, many different things. Yeah, because yeah, I see several, Lauren and Terry, thank you, just about existing local farmers and sounds like these round tables being mm -hmm. very intentional about talking to stakeholders in the area. L let me just add a point. Yeah. So the theme of this is spectrum. Mm -hmm. And we started with our belief is that the state, the country, and the world needs a spectrum of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So while our day job, is controlled environmental ag. Our appetite and our curiosity is around all things ag. So we envision partnering with local and national farmers are what, in, what are the best practices in ag. So for those of you that don't know, in open field ag, one of the most important conversations right now, and the reason we have to value open field ag, is the ability of soil to sequester carbon as a solution to mitigate climate change. So we are in the controlled environmental ag lane, but we, are going to keep an eye on and work mm -hmm. with farmers locally, nationally, and globally to understand the range of farming best practices. Yeah, 
Thank you. Yes, several, I see several comments coming in on this. A lot of people also really excited about this commitment to healthy, healthy Kentucky, healthy world, healthy lifestyle. Um, this concept of farm to table um, that's really kind of blowing up. If you could talk more about that movement and that culture right now and where you see that healthy lifestyle going long term. Yeah, let me talk to that. So, so I haven't mentioned uh, so far, but our secret weapon, shh, don't tell anybody. Martha Stewart is on our board. Martha, the Martha, the OG of Farm to Table. So that was very deliberate, and it speaks to our appetite and our aspiration to understand this intersection of nutrition, health, taste, delicious food, and fun, right? So we envision relationships with local, national, and global chefs that advocate on behalf of delicious tasty food, anchored in tomatoes, tomatoes everywhere, tomatoes on everything, and also this notion of how do we reach the public and educate them on better nutrition. So this is definitely in our wheelhouse. Somebody, shout out to Jose Andreas, somebody we've got mad respect for is Jose Andreas in World Central Kitchen and the wonderful job they did with COVID and food banks. So mm. this is all on our radar. It's early days, we haven't sold our first tomato yet but we definitely feel we're gonna to have to have a strategy anchored in the intersection of chefs, home chefs, and restaurants, et cetera, and also this notion of educating people on, on food and nutrition. One model we talk about a lot is Impossible Foods and what they've done to educate society, provide options, non-judgmental, just giving people a slew of options, and they built that brand, quite frankly, through relationships with top chefs getting chefs to embrace that they could have a plant-based option to that burger I love. And I do love my <laughs> burgers. Well, yeah, so I'm gonna do Dwayne's question, then Kristen's question. And you kind of talked about this, of you don't have a tomato ready yet, but when do you see the production being ready? Yeah, first quarter 2021, if not a tad earlier. Yeah, all right, Dwayne, so we got that one. And then Kristen said, do you have a plan for a second or imperfect produce to sell, donate due to food banks? What are you doing with imperfect produce? Well, the, the good news is the wastage and the level of imperfection in controlled environmental ag is less than open field. We're still working through those plans. As I said, we haven't started selling, but again, our intention is to be best in class in all of those areas. And you can see our passion and our interest in food insecurity, food banks, et cetera. So I can't give you a precise answer right now, but that's definitely on our radar. And then another one from Dwayne, does App Harvest have customers lined up ready for once you have all these tomatoes, if you're gonna feed the whole Northeast, how do you guys plan to distribute? Yeah, so the plan is we're partners with a group called Mastronardi. They're one of the largest wholesalers of controlled environmental ag in North America. They're wonderful folks, they're out of Canada and it's their job to get us distribution in the top 25 over time. And then this one is similar, but I think this retail, people are really excited about this downtown Lexington store. Um, Y'all come. <laughs> Y'all. You've, <laughs> you've got retail there. I don't think it's open yet. Is it? It, it oh, could it, be. It could be. Call Ramel. Oh, <laughs> Ramel will get you the, into the secret. Yes. So tell people where exactly is it, what is it doing, why, why Lexington? So right across the street, well, one, Lexington, uh, because when we have our partners come in town, unfortunately, Lexington is a central location to get them out mm -hmm. to the eastern part of our state. Um, outside of that, it's across the street from Rupp Arena. 24,000 going crazy, where, rocking the where, building. Where? I said, uh, Rupp uh, Arena. Um, yeah, so you so, may see a game while you're there. Oh, definitely. Take over to take a, see def a game. Definitely. You want to buy a tee before the game and then come back and buy another one. <laughs> Absolutely. Come, just, you know, slice up tomatoes. It's a, a piece of shop right next to us for pies and mm -hmm. pines for a little bit of pre-gaming. So, you know, we right there in the mix. Yeah, so they'll, they'll go do that. And then tell me what's in that retail store. There's some fun stuff there. It is, so you can go and learn a lot more about our company, things that we are doing, what we're up to in Appalachia. Say hello to Emily when you get there. She's great and lovely, but you could get some merch. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, I would say stop by and get the Faith and Grit shirts. That's the only one I rock. <laughs> um, but we got uh, 
super dope gear. New Frontier designed a lot of our gear. Who? Shout Who? out to them. New Frontier, yes, they're they're pretty sick. Um, so yeah, just come learn about our story, get some nice merch, and be ready to camp out before we head over to Rupp because I hear that the the um, the, the league is starting up pretty soon. Socially distant, of course. So this is going to be the new hot spot before the game. Yep. Um, super exciting. Sounds like you guys have several ideas about how to activate that space. Um, let's see. So there are lots of organizations on the ground working with large networks of farmers. Are you in contact with any of these groups? Yeah, one group we've talked to is American Farmland Trust. I know them very well. A lot of respect to them. They're one of the oldest and largest groups representing farmers in the United States. And they have a Kentucky program, and they actually help to write the farm bill. So we've had some very preliminary conversations with them, but we plan on working with all of those groups for sure. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this is about an ecosystem. It's about an ecosystem. And from the government, the state government, who's been terrific, shout out to the governor and his office, they've been big supporters, to groups like SOAR, which is about uh, supporting businesses in the region to groups like American Farmland Trust. We absolutely plan on working with all of them. Yeah, so I was going to say, if you haven't mentioned the SOAR group, I know you guys are working with SOAR. And then you guys kind of tease New Frontier. Tell everyone what that is. So New Frontier, I mean, they're the Patagonia of, of Appalachia. If you want to rock any dope gear and you're from the state of Kentucky, you need to be rocking New Frontier. Either that or Faith and Grit. <laughs> Talk about creatives, they're definitely, definitely leading the way. They're super creative. I love their style. Um, How old are they? 40s, 50s? 40s, 50s? No, I think they're both mid-20s. Yeah, yeah. They're two young guys. Yeah. We were with them last yeah. night. Josh and... Josh and Jared. Right. Josh and Jared, shout out to, shout out to my guys. <laughs> yeah. So when they, if they're not joining us now live and they watch this later, they're going to hear the shout out. Blow up their phone and their website. <laughs> Blow it up. <laughs> Follow them on Instagram. Would mm -hmm. love to kind of hear from them later on in the year. Um, and I was listening to, I think, a podcast you guys scheduled with them. And I think they said you first contacted them and they're like, oh, no, talk to you later. And then they realized you were uh, what you were doing. So tell me about that, how you connected with them. Jonathan can speak more to that yeah. story than I can, um, but it just goes to show that, um, you know, when, when you're coming into a community mm -hmm. and you're saying that you're going to do this and you're going to do that, mm -hmm. um, nine, nine times out of ten, the people that are from that community, they want you to prove what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So it took a little bit of us, you know, actually walking the talk. Mm -hmm. Um, for them to come around and actually believe in what we were trying to do and for them to know that we truly wanted to make a difference. Um, so then they came back around yeah. and then they, then they joined the team, yeah. yeah so but but let, me, let me talk to that yeah. a minute though. Um, this notion of community, mm. this notion of community is really, really important. Mm. And for those of you that in the artistic community, I've seen this movie before, what he talks about in terms of the relationship between App Harvest and New Frontier. It's taking place right now in Brooklyn, right? Mm. Brooklyn always lived in the shadow of Manhattan. Manhattan was here, Brooklyn mm. was here, right? And then in the past five, 10 years, Jay-Z mm. and, and the basketball team there, uh, the artists, the musical artists that have em embraced Brooklyn, the designers that have been embraced Brooklyn, the tech entrepreneurs that have embraced Brooklyn. Brooklyn has had a vibe for about six or seven years now, mm -hmm. right? And, and if you look at real estate prices, literally in New York, COVID has disrupted them. But over the past five years, Brooklyn is the preferred place because it's got the vibe. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'm not mm. here all the time, you guys are here a lot more, but I think Lexington mm. and this region is developing a similar vibe, not living in the shadow of anybody. Mm -hmm. Like people are leaning in. I, was with, I did a podcast last night on tech in the region and I asked those guys, like, what are they seeing? And they're like, it's you can feel the pulse and the energy of the region. And, it, and, it, and it's built and it's catalyzed by those kind of relationships. New Frontier to App Harvest, right? Mm -hmm. and, and New Frontier to somebody else. And you can just feel it igniting. So uh, I'm just telling all of you, I've seen this before. It's wonderful. It's led by people like you, right? Like the artists in Brooklyn are the folks. Right. When they walk into the co coffee shop, when they walk into the restaurant, people know them. You're entrepreneurs. 
you're risk takers, you're courageous, and you bring that energy. Well, and that's what I was, it's what you kind of were talking about, building the trust with community, and, and that's so exciting to hear in Lexington, because we really, over the last, we've been a chapter for four or five years, and really wanted to showcase push into the front the thriving creative community. There's a lot going on. Basketball is one of them, but there's also this awesome creative makers, innovators, tech people, designers here in Lexington. So we're really excited to hear you say that. So talk to me a little bit more about Moorhead. Your partners are in Moorhead, you're in Moorhead. Um, for those, most of our people here are from Lexington. Talk about a little bit more about Moorhead. Oh gosh, Moorhead is a great place. <laughs> I've been living there for a few months now. Um, it's a different speed from Pikeville, mm -hmm. where I was for a year and a half before that. I have cell phone service, mm -hmm. which is lovely. And uh, no, the people have been really great and welcoming. Um, we've built great relationships with the University of Moorhead. Um, we have local staff in that just joined our growing family. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're really excited about, about our facility mm -hmm. coming. Um, so it's, it's been a great place, and, and I'm very appreciative of Moorhead. Yep. Awesome. I'm, you might see me rocking some some <laughs> blue and yellow, pretty soon, but um, uh oh, not blue and white. It's, it's still I still bleed blue, so okay. you know, well, so well, good. We definitely won't get you into cardinal red. So um, blue and yellow will. Red when it's red when it's about love and it's about passion when it's about. The Cardinals, yeah. not so much. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> we only have a few, and I think everyone in this crew is like hating me right now for the Louisville. Um, but that, yeah, that's my dirty little secret. That's where I went. So we only have a few more minutes. Feel free to send some more questions. Um, we have a few more here in the hopper. So let's see. We talked about the retail space. We talked about, um, so this is another one from Dwayne. Will the price be competitive with produce grown? How are you guys doing that unique value proposition for your guys' food? Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to that. Um, look, when you think about vegetables, you don't think about a special brand of vegetables, right? Unquestionably. But this business is being architected for this to be a special type of vegetable. So uh, on so many dimensions, uh, the fact that when you buy an app harvest tomato, you're doing better for the planet. When you buy an app harvest tomato, you're standing up for workers' rights. When you buy an app harvest tomato, you're standing up for less, if not no, pesticides. So the value proposition is grounded in all of those things. And based on that alone, we don't expect to be a commodity-priced item. Now, we may not start that way, but the intention is we want this to be viewed as a higher value kind of proposition. And then from the marketing side, which is where I live, uh, this brand is going to be supported by Martha. Mm. We've got some innovations coming down to Pike. Can't talk. Zip, 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 right? But, but uh, we see building the brand through partnerships. Mm -hmm. We think retailers will care. When I was at Nature Conservancy, we would do deals with Whole Foods regionally. Yeah. Earth Day, Earth Month, we would activate promotions where Whole Foods would say, if you care about the planet, when you buy our product, we want you to make a donation to Saving the Colorado. So we have a slew of things that we'll be doing to elevate the profile of the brand, to elevate focus on the region, right? You know, part of our messaging is going to be when you buy a product from App Harvest, you're, you're, you're contributing to help both the state of Kentucky and the community of Appalachia. Mm. And trust me, I don't think any other brands in the vegetable aisle are making those kind of statements. So, so we want all this to translate to a brand that feels, looks, is different than the other guys in the category. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, what the, is the other big takeaway? Anything else that you haven't said that, hey, I really want to tell the Lexington community, I really want to tell the global community, anything I haven't asked you that, hey, we need to talk about this before we leave? You want to tell them about the plan for the University of Kentucky uniforms with tomatoes on them? Are you ready to share that? Let's keep that on. Let's keep that under wraps for now. Yeah, I, I think the UK uniforms are going to look great with the tomatoes on the oh, side. Yeah, is that, is that right, a, right by the heart. Oh, big tomato heart. Yeah. Yep. Again, we're peeling back the curtain, getting some of the inside look here. Um, so, and we'll make sure that Big Chill is ready in about five minutes. We'll bring Big Chill back on. So, 
We've, we've talked about Lexington, but why should people who are going to watch this in New York or Austin, Texas, or anyone, you guys are not just sharing your food here, Lexington, you're sharing it to all over the East Coast. Why should they care? I think in our prep call, one thing you talked about, is there some worry what farming will look like in 10 years? Can we produce enough food for the people that are on the planet in 10 years? So talk about what that looks like. I could, I could, yeah, go ahead, I could go start ahead. off. Well, um, well, when we look at our, our current climate, and we, I mean, one specifically when we look at water, 70% mm -hmm. um, of our fresh water consumption goes to agriculture. Mm. Um, and the CDC is reporting that we're going to have 10 billion more people on this planet. Well, how are we going to feed them? Um, we're going to need two planet Earths, actually, you know, if we don't continue to focus on innovation and combining technology. Mm -hmm. um, as, as Jeff mentioned, we use 90 percent less water in our, in our facility, in our 10 acre retention pond. You know, and that water is being filtered back through our system directly to the roots to feed our plants. I mean, Water is a huge issue. It's polluting our oceans. It's causing people all over the world to migrate into different places. So we ha we have to work with we have to work with um, our, our environment to produce and, and continue to grow an abundance of, of more food and healthy food. Okay. So we will need. You said we will need two planet Earths to produce enough food. Yeah. To feed the to, global. To be to feed 10 billion people. Yep. And so that's where I've seen through these scrolling thick pictures, your vertical farming, your tomatoes on tomatoes on tomatoes on tomatoes. Yes. Um, and that's that how you're being more efficient and effective with building these greenhouses. Abs absolutely. So in our facility, um, we have diffused light, diffused mm -hmm. glass that helps with uh, uniformity of distribution of light distribution. We have it's pretty cool. Over 300 sensors, 24 automated climate controlled uh, sections in a facility and it's all optimized to grow the best plants we get 30 times the yield and, and we save 90 percent less water and um it, it's just it's just really fun to be growing food and to be doing it the right way and using this technology to do it yeah i remember the first time i heard that about food about something's going to have to change in 10 years for the amount of people on this planet for the way that we're producing food so it's exciting that's happening right here in our region, yep. in Lexington, in Kentucky. We're becoming this ag tech capital of the world, of the globe, kind of looking to what's happening here in Kentucky. All right, this is your last chance. Any last thing before we end it up today? Uh, uh, let me follow up on that point, because what I love about this job is I love App Harvest, but I love the bigger mission and the bigger vision. And the bigger vision is, and this is coming from the governor. There's a heartfelt commitment and aspiration that Kentucky be the center of this industry. So this isn't about just about app harvest. Mm. This is about all of us mobilizing investment capital into the region. We want five app harvests. We want 10 app harvests. We want to be the dominant one, mm. but we want others to come on in, right? So for all of you, the thing, that, the fit thing to follow with this is you look at the economic activity that's being generated by App Harvest, multiply that times 10. That's the vision. Mm. That's the vision with the state. The vision federally is we, App Harvest, would love to see the federal government over time do with this industry what was done with solar. So you've all heard about investment tax credits and solar industry. So our long-term aspiration mm. is that this industry be anchored in Kentucky mm and complemented with government subsidies, billions of dollars to invest in any of you that want to do what Jonathan has done, right? Wouldn't it be great if there was federal money available to spur entrepreneurship into the region? So that's, you know, that, that's kind of the long term where we see this going. And so exciting. And then one thing I, I want to say before we get off is, because Jonathan's not here with us today, you guys are speaking so highly about him. Anything else we need to know about Jonathan? I know. We had thought he was going to be here in the kind of last minute. We um, had some changes, which we totally understand. But tell us a little bit about Jonathan. Anything else we should know? He loves to wear denim. <laughs> 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 he yeah. sees some denim guy running around Lexington like, like 100 miles an hour. That's Jonathan. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of the most passionate, um, 
one of the most passionate uh, people I've ever met, yeah. and uh, his his love for his hometown state is is just truly unmatched. Is truly unmatched. So he's from here. Yes. And you guys met at UK. Yes, we we met at the University of Kentucky, which is, you know, just you know, shout out to the University of Kentucky and. Please, if you are a student, if you're studying mm -hmm. anything, you know, be be in the moment, value and appreciate the people that you interact with, that you come in contact with, because, you know, it's, it's very valuable. It's very valuable. So, yeah. Yeah, I know we have several people looking at the registration today from the College of Ag on today. So they're probably loving that you are pumping the College of Ag yeah. and UK um, and all those who are going to watch this in the future. So we heard a little about Jonathan. He's from here. We heard a little bit about App Harvest. We heard about what they're trying to do in Lexington, Kentucky, in this Appalachia region, um, really focusing and building community and connections and stakeholders and being in the high schools and being intentional and listening. Um, so. I just want to applaud you guys. Thanks so much for being with us Thank you. today. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, this is awesome. So what I like to end all of our meetings with is our mantra that everyone is welcome and everyone is creative.